What's going on, everybody? I'm Nick Nanavati from Art of War, and I'm here today to talk to you about chaos, just how it all works and how to build a list for them. For those of you who don't know me that well, I've been playing chaos pretty avidly through my 40k career, really made a name for myself as a chaos player or a demon player in specifics, all through 6th and 7th edition, and thanks to one of our subscribers who contacted us directly and had the suggestion for an amazing video, which we really took to heart, we decided to come up with this video for you. So I'm here today to break down exactly how chaos works for you in 9th edition, all those overlapping keywords, all those crazy synergies, all the what's a demon, what's not a demon, I'm here to teach you all of it. So sit back, grab some popcorn, grab a beer, relax, and listen to the soothing sounds of the brown magic. Chaos is a lot like every other faction in the game. Their army is comprised of up to three detachments in competitive 2000 point match play games, and each attachment must contain a series of units that all share at least one common faction keyword. Excluding, of course, the Chaos faction keyword. Much like Imperium players can't use the Imperium faction to tie their units together. This is very common practice. Chaos, uh, for the majority of it, all those different legions, Heretic Astartes being the foil to Adeptus Astartes, have legions, which are the foil to chapters from the good guy side of things. So you may mix around your legions and get different kind of results from them. So let's take your standard issue Chaos Detachment. This is just normal stuff from your Chaos Space Marine Codex. Take a Chaos Lord, a Sorcerer, some Chaos Space Marine, some Cultists, Defilers, Obliterators, Terminators, whatever have you. You can then choose whatever Legion you want to make them. Whether it be Emperor's Children or World Eaters or Iron Warriors, whatever it might be, they then use those Legion rules which can be found in the Psychic Awakening Faith and Fury. So you get all of the stratagems and relics and warlord traits and whatnot available to you from codex chaos space marines so long as that you have one detachment comprised of all heretic astartes units as long as they have the heretic astartes faction keyword and as long as every unit in that detachment has the same matching legion they can also take from whatever their legion is so if every unit in my heretic astartes detachment also shared the Emperor's Children keyword, they could then draw from the Emperor's Children Legion buffs. This is very much like how if every Adeptus Astartes unit in your Space Marine army came from the Iron Hands chapter, they would draw from the Iron Hands Codex supplement as well as a supplement. So that's perfect. That's a, It's very directly translatable. This is like the first level of chaos, so I really want to make sure we get our foundation down. Within each Heretic Astartes detachment, you can mix up your legions. There's a few reasons you might want to do this, but basically you're linking your detachment together with all the Heretic Astartes keyword units, and then just changing the legions around. So you can have a Black Legion Abaddon the Despoiler leading a little patrol with 10 Cultists, 10 Emperor's Children Noise Marines, 10 World Eaters Corn Berserkers, and 10 Night Lords Warp Talons, and call that a nice little patrol. A few reasons you might want to do that is you still retain objective secured, so those Cultists, those Emperor's Children Noise Marines, and those World Eater Corn Berserkers all being troops, since they share the World Eaters for the Corn Berserkers and the Emperor's Children keyword for the Noise Marines, will all be objective secured. That's great. You also unlock all the generic Chaos Base Marine stratagems. And while this doesn't have many Legion-specific stratagems, it still has some, which you will access. So the 4 plus to deny a Psychic Power stratagem that World Eaters possess, you will be able to do that from your World Eaters Corn Berserkers. Similarly, the minus one to hit psychic stratagem that Night Lords have in the generic Chaos Space Marine Codex, you'll be able to make use of that on your Night Lords. So now's the time where you might be like, wait Nick, you can mix up your legions in your own detachment, why wouldn't I just always do that? And while, while that is true, you are giving up some other stuff. So you don't get any legion specific traits, because your detachment that I just gave as an example isn't made of any one legion, you don't get... Black Legion's ability to advance and fire rapid fire weapons, you don't get Emperor's Children's always strike first, you don't get World Eaters plus one attack on the charge, etc, etc. So there is opportunity cost there, as well of course you don't unlock all the extra Legion supplement stuff from that Psychic Awakening Faith and Fury world if let's say you have a full World Eaters detachment, you get like 8 or 9 more stratagems, a whole trade of Warlord traits, a whole page of relics, all of that stuff as well. Now that we've covered the basics of the Heretic Astartes detachments from Chaos Space Marines, and their legions that go along with them from Faith and Fury, let's take a second and talk about Death Guard and Thousand Sons. Death Guard and Thousand Sons have their own codexes, so when you make an attachment that's made of all Death Guard keyword units or all Thousand Sons keyword units, you get to use that codex instead. So, because it's not a Chaos Space Marine detachment, 
It's not drawing from Codex Chaos Space Marines. It is a Death Guard detachment drawing from Codex Death Guard. So you don't get access to all of the rules from the Codex Chaos Space Marine detachment. You are working entirely from your own Death Guard or Thousand Suns Codex, meaning you only get access to those stratagems, but you get access to those which are independent and different from the Codex Chaos Space Marine generic ones. Similarly, you get uh, your own table of warlord traits, your own table of relics, and your own legion rules to go along with it, such as Thousand Suns getting an extra six inches to cast on their psychic powers, or Death Guard getting their ability to get an extra six inch range on their rapid fire weapons. You'll also notice that some units in the Death Guard and Thousand Suns Codex are unique to them and not found in the Chaos Space Marine book, such as Mutal Vortex Beasts and Thousand Suns and Plague Burst Collars and Bloat Drones from Death Guard. They are specifically and only ever given to their respective legions. Like in the Plague Burst Crawler, it has keyword Death Guard, not keyword Legion in brackets, so that you can then replace that keyword with whatever you want. They must be Death Guard. Similarly, you'll find that they have a lot omitted many units from Codex Chaos Space Marines in each secondary codex, Death Guard and Thousand Suns. So you cannot include a unit of Warp Talents in your otherwise Death Guard detachment because they're not in the Death Guard codex. And there's a rule, I believe it's in Chaos Space Marines Codex, that says things like Warp Talents cannot have the Death Guard keyword. This basically means that if you want to include a unit of Warp Talents in your otherwise Death Guard detachment, you are actually making your Death Guard detachment into a mixed Legion detachment from Chaos Space Marines. It even goes a step further, however. Because Death Guard and Chaos Space Marines have units that do not overlap, for example, the Plague Burst Crawler, once you start taking unique units to their own codex, you still have to link all of your units within a detachment to, their, to a keyword. So which keyword you link it through, if it's Death Guard, you draw from the Chaos, Death Guard codex, if it's Chaos Space Marines, you draw from the Chaos Space Marine codex, etc. It determines what rules you're allowed to play with. So if you take a Plague Burst Crawler, which is Heretic Astartes and Death Guard, and pair it with Night Lords Warp Towns, which are Night Lords, Heretic Astartes, Chaos Space Marines, where the, the marriage lies is pretty much only in the Heretic Astartes keyword. And there's no codex supplement for Heretic Astartes. The Chaos Space Marine codex only allows you to make use of those rules, the stratagems, the warlord traits, the relics, the psychic powers, if every unit in your army is Chaos Space Marine, as the, as the bracketed keywords for the faction there. So because you're taking your Plague Burst Crawlers from Death Guard and your Night Lords Warp Towns over here, you actually don't get any special cool rules for either of your halves of that detachment. Your Night Lords won't get any stratagems such as Veterans of the Long War, which is generic to Chaos Space Marines. Your Plague Burst Crawlers and whatnot won't get any of your Death Guard stratagems. Similarly, you won't have objective secured on any of your units. You won't have Night Lords leadership shenanigans legion trait nor death guards uh, rapid fire extra inches legion trait or any of that stuff it is very easy to screw this up so i want to really drive the point home here now of course you are free to mix the detachments as much as you like it just determines which rules you are able to do and if you take multiple detachments in your army you may perfectly and reasonably take a detachment of night lords chaos space marines where every unit has the night lords keyword from chaos space marines and every unit in a different detachment is made of Death Guard stuff, then you will have full access to the Death Guard supplement for your Death Guard attachment, and full access to your Chaos Space Marine Night Lord attachment for your Night Lord attachment. So there's a lot of room for combining different factions and sub-factions and legions, just not much within the same detachment, although it is entirely legal to do so. You'll also note that within the Codex Chaos Space Marines, Death Guard, and Thousand Suns, they've also included a lot of demon units from Codex Demons, such as Bloodletters, Pink Horrors, Nurglings, Beasts of Nurgle, etc. The reason they've done this is simply as another place to find the data sheet because it's, it's like, cool, I guess Chaos wants to all stick together, I don't know. This has no impact on the rules. You are still allowed to include those let's say units of nerglings in your death guard army because everyone will be linked through the faction keyword nurgle which is a whole new thing marks are also faction keywords i'm going to explain that in a moment here but when you include those nerglings in your death guard attachment or you include those pink horrors in your root thousand sons attachment 
you are no longer a Thousand Suns detachment because every unit in that codex, or in that detachment rather, doesn't have the same Thousand Suns keyword, or Death Guard keyword. It's actually only linked. They don't even have Chaos Space Marines or Terror Tech Astartes. You're linking everything by the Nurgle keyword or the Zinch keyword or whatever it might be. As a silly example here, you could have a detachment that is Abaddon, the contorted epitome from C Codex Demons, 10 Demonettes, and 3 Obliterators, just so long as all of that is linked by the Slanish keyword. It's drawing from 4 different books or something, but it is legal. So when you do include these random units of Nurglings in your Death Guard patrol or whatever you have, your Nurglings won't have objective secured. You won't unlock demon stratagems and you won't unlock any death guard stratagems either you won't make use of your death guard legion traits nor your nurgle locus for demons it's just a whole messed up detachment of sadness that said when you are building some very creative chaos lists especially towards the end of eighth edition as we saw there are definitely times where you're trying not to spend your command points to get new detachments in your army but you want to include these very powerful units you may look at mixing up your detachments, foregoing special rules and stratagem access for just the ability to include these units in your army. So that is a nice workaround for some creative list builders in Chaos. So now that we've covered pretty much all there is to do with Heretic Astartes and Chaos Space Marines on the forefront, let's now look at demons as a potential ally and how they work for the Chaos as a super faction. So demons have their own standalone codex and they can be linked together through different keywords from that of Chaos Space Marines. Nothing there has Keratic Astartes or Chaos Space Marines or their own legions even. Demons pretty much just have the faction keyword Demon. Note this is very different from the units in Chaos Space Marines that also happen to have the Demon keyword. For example, if you look on the data sheet of something like a Soul Grinder from the Demon Codex, it has the faction keyword Demons. Then if you look at the data sheet from something like Obliterators in the Chaos Space Spring Codex, it only has the unit keyword, Demon. You cannot put these two units in the same detachment using Demon as the linking keyword because one is a faction keyword for the Soul Grinder while the other is just a unit keyword for the Obliterators. Very easy to get tricked up there as well. But nonetheless, your Demon detachment can be linked one of two ways. Basically everything in the Demon detachment has the Demon faction keyword or everything in your mixed detachment has a mark of whatever keyword, mark of corn, mark of Nurgle, mark of Slanish. That's how my latest example, the Abaddon, Couture, Depending, Demonettes, and Obliterators was linked together. It was all mark of Slanish keyword, not demon keyword. So when you have a mixed uh, detachment of demons that are all, here's some blood letters, some horrors, some demonettes, all in the same detachment, you are fully legal as a demon detachment. You get your stratagems, everybody's obsec, you get your reward traits, psychic powers, relics, etc. Everything is kosher. The only thing you miss out on is the demon loci, which is an additional bonus rule you get if every unit in your detachment is of the same mark and faction keyword demon. So in the latest example, the Abaddon, Contorted Penny, 10 Demonettes, and 3 Obliterators, while everything does have the same mark, it's not faction keyword demon, so there is no loci from the demon codex being generated there. However, if you take a Herald of Slanish, the Contorted Epitome, 10 Demonettes, and a Slanish Soul Grinder, that is a faction demon Slanish keyword detachment, so it'll get all the demon rules from the codex, plus the additional loci for Slanish, which allows you to advance and charge. You'll often find competitive players trying to take minimum detachments, relatively small detachments of a mono faction mark demon detachment. So let's say one pox bringer and three units of nine nerdlings and a little patrol. This will allow you to unlock the loci because it is a pure Nurgle demon detachment, which will then let you apply that locus to anything Nurgle demon from your chaos space marines or your death guard because things like Obliterators or Possessed, for example, have the unit keyword demon, which allows them to still make use of special rules from the demon codex, which buffs demons because they are themselves demons. So there's a lot of mixed synergy there. The, probably the most common use you'll find now is people will take a mono Slanish demon detachment, which uh, is linked together by faction Slanish and faction demon keywords 
get that loci for advancing and charging, and then taking things like Possessed from Emperor's Children or Alpha Legion or whatever have you, allowing them to advance and charge. You could do this with any of the different locuses and any of the different demon units from Chaos Space Marines, Thousand Sons, or Death Guard, but this is one of the more common ways of doing it. Note that this pretty much only applies to the loci. Demons have an FAQ, which prevents them from applying any of the Codex Demon stratagems onto non-Codex Demon units. So things such as the ability for slanting students to reduce attacks for one CP, that stratagem cannot be applied onto slanish possessed, for example. The last thing I want to cover before I tie this all together is summoning. Summoning is a really important tool that Chaos players have at their disposal, which basically allows you to summon any demons off of any Chaos characters you have so long as their mark matches the unit you're trying to summon. However, if the unit is unmarked or has every mark in the case of Abaddon, it may summon any specific legion or any specific god marked demon. So oftentimes, for things such as the Contorted Epitome, for example, you'll leave points open in your army so that you can summon her without having to go out of your way to take a demon detachment. Another application of summoning is if you don't want to necessarily always have a Contorted Epitome in your chaos list, but sometimes you want to, maybe you leave 200 points open so you can either summon her or bring in a bunch of nerdlings, although they will not be objective secured since they're not part of a detachment. Likewise, your contorted epitome won't come with any loci or anything like that. It's simply just the unit itself with no other ex external value. That said, it is a very useful tool and you'll often find a lot of top players looking for creative ways for summoning into their army. So just to give you an example of what a souped up chaos army can look like, let's take a look at this. Emperor's Children Patrol with Lucius the Eternal, 10 Noise Marines with Sonic Blasters, and a unit of 20 possessed. Then a mixed Nurgle Patrol with a Malignant Plaguecaster, 10 Pox Walkers, 3 Nurglings, a Plague Burst Crawler, and 5 Chaos Spawn. And then a Demon Detachment, which is Slanish Demons, featuring the Keeper of Secrets, the Contorted Epitome, and 30 Demonettes. There's a few things this, this army is doing right, and a few things this army is doing not so well. So one thing which is great is this army does unlock the Slanish Locus. It has a mono faction keyword Slanish Demon Detachment. Therefore, the characters, the Contorted Depending and the Keeper of Secrets, will give the Locus off to nearby Slanish Demon units to advance and charge. So the Possessed and the Emperor's Children Detachment can actually make good use of that along with the plus one strength that those demon characters will also provide, like the Contorted Epitome. It also has full access to the Emperor's Children stratagems for plus one strength and damage, along with the Chaos Space Marine stratagems for veterans of Long War, since it has a Chaos Space Marine Legion Emperor's Children detachment as well. However, it screws up in its Nurgle detachment. It has a unit of Nurglings in its otherwise pure Death Guard detachment. So you don't unlock any Death Guard stratagems or the ability to have any specific plague companies, meaning the spawn cannot be given Contaminated Monstrosity, which is an amazing value command point on a unit like that. You can't unlock any stratagems such as the Plague Burst Crawler's ability to auto-explode or fall back and shoot from Poxmongers or any of that stuff. It's a very kind of confused and unsynergized attachment. So you can see how small little subtle changes like three Nurglings messing up your Death Guard versus having the right mono detachments in your Slaney stuff can really impact the efficacy of your detachments. Chaos as a super faction is probably the most convoluted and complex in all of 40k. Even top players struggle to understand the nuances between which attachment gives which buffs and which units are eligible to receive them. Don't feel bad if you feel a little bit overwhelmed or you feel like you didn't quite grasp it on the first walkthrough. This is a complicated subject. I wanted to make this video so that everyone could start to understand how Chaos works. Avid aspiring Chaos players can start to understand all the depths to their army and really kind of flex those list building muscles and for those of you who don't have interest in playing chaos yourself but you want to learn how to play against chaos so you can beat up your friends or do better at a tournament you can learn from this video i hope you guys enjoyed it give me your thoughts and comments in the feedback this was actually a video that was suggested to us by one of our subscribers here on youtube so i highly recommend if you want to see us to cover a topic please shoot us a message you can reach us on any of our social media platforms link below give us a like a follow subscribe you know what to do and we'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care.